March 11, 2011. At 1446 local time, a movement in the Earth's crust 30 kilometers deep in the Sea of Japan. The tragedy begins. The earthquake raises a tsunami wave which strikes the coast, hitting the city of Fukushima and the nearby nuclear power plant. The flooding damages the reactor and radiations prevent any human intervention. Only robots could operate in those conditions, preventing one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. The best designs for vehicles able to operate in such tragic situations were put to the test for the first time in Italy, in Piombino, in Eurathlon 15. Eurotron is a European project which organizes uh, robotics competition. In particular, in uh, this year, in 2015, Eurotron Grand Challenge is a multi-domain robotics competition uh, in which robots from air, land and sea domain uh, will challenge in a scenario inspired by the Fukushima accident. More than 40 robots, 130 participants divided into 16 teams from 21 countries faced a challenge never attempted before – to make a team of terrestrial, marine and aerial robots work together in realistic mock emergency response scenarios. Uh, Eurathlon 2015 is the final competition of the Eurathlon project. Uh, in fact, we've been running for uh, three years. Uh, the first Eurathlon was in 2013 in Berchtesgaden in Germany, focusing on land robots. In 2014 we had Eurathlon uh, focusing on sea robotics and that was in La Spezia. And the culmination of this is Eurathlon 2015, a combination of land, sea and air robots here in Piombino. The task of organizing the grand challenge of Eurathlon 15 was entrusted to CMRE of La Spezia, the NATO Center for Maritime Research and Experimentation, a world-class scientific research and experimentation facility that organizes and conducts scientific research and technology development, centered on the maritime domain. The Grand Challenge simulated a nuclear accident in which humans could not intervene. The scenario was Enel's Tor del Sale power plant, not far from Piombino. The alarm. The drones fly up to assess the situation from the sky. They are equipped with cameras and sensors to map the area and to identify access points to the building. Then they send the data to the ground robots entering the power plant. Their task is to close some valves and thus prevent radioactive water leakage. Meanwhile in the sea, the autonomous underwater vehicles detect the bodies of some missing persons and communicate their position for recovery all without the intervention of researchers who can only supervise and watch the work of their machines from afar. The competition has uh, uh, different levels. Uh, in some of the levels uh, you can play by yourself, uh, that is the underwater robot by itself at sea and the land robot by itself on land. Uh, but uh, the scoring uh, is such to encourage uh, the more complex operations in which there is uh, uh, communication and possibly cooperation uh, among the robots in different domain. For instance, you get uh, uh, bonus points uh, if uh, uh, the aerial vehicle, the aerial robot, uh, gets uh, a map of the uh, of the building and uh, communicate to the land robot where they should go to find a leakage or to find an injured person. Eurathlon 15 put together like pieces of a mosaic scientific experiences from different teams that will allow robots to intervene in the future in the event of natural disasters. 
but above all, it allowed the researchers to test their vehicles on the field and deal with the difficulties of moving in a realistic, albeit simulated, scenario. Eurathlon links air, land and underwater communication and cooperation. So here is the, one of the uh, opportunities for us to see how we can develop our technologies for underwater communication and link them to existing networks, to existing technologies that operate in the air and in space. But what will robots of the future look like? Perhaps they will resemble us a little, like DRC Hubo, created by the Korean Institute for Science and Technology, winner of the last DARPA Robotics Challenge in Los Angeles, the most important competition in the world of humanoid robotics. He can do the driver vehicle, or some, by using the tool, he can cut the wall, or open the door, or some closer leaking belt, or climb up the ladder. So he can do many things, but very slow compared to the human. DRC Hubo arrived in Piombino along with Walkman, its European challenger at the DARPA Robotics Challenge, made by the Italian Institute of Technology in Genoa, in collaboration with the Piaggio Center of the University of Pisa. A robotic platform become also a test bench for implementing some form of human behavior. So there will be more and more merging between behavioral neuroscience and machinery to make smarter and more adapt robot to live nearby humans. Perhaps in the future, humanoid robots like these will work side by side with humans, ready to intervene in case of natural disasters and in hazardous environments. The road is still long, but Eurathlon 15 showed that the goal is not unreachable. Very, very happy with the performance, with the, uh, with the not just uh, not just the competition, but the cooperation between teams. <laughs> the first prize is awarded to Team Cobham, University of Girona, ISEF, Ines Tech. The challenge of your Athlon 15 allowed the most promising European researchers involved in robotics to meet and collaborate. Their work will give rise to new solutions to face future disasters such as Fukushima and make our planet a safer place. Thank you.